Hey guys, welcome back to your next class. So in the previous session, uh, we were looking at exactly uh, what is the uh, laws that we can use whenever there's a circuit. We looked at junction and loop laws. Today we are going to look at a different topic and that is nothing but the word power. Okay. Now again, this is a very common word that we use in daily language. We say power, this power, that. But over here specifically, we are talking about the power when it comes to electricity, okay, or electrical appliances that are being used. So in our previous classes, I think in your grade nine, you must have learned something about power. Okay, whenever there's work done, we say energy is definitely used. And whenever there is a work energy relation, definitely there is power. Okay, we've defined power before as nothing but rate of doing work. Okay, at what rate the work is being done, that is called as power. So uh, it is quite pretty much similar over here when it comes to electricity. Okay, except the work over here is nothing but moving of charges. Okay, we don't move objects as such, we only move charges and that is done by the electric force. So uh, let us take a small example over here. All right, so I'm going to take a small piece of conductor like this right now i'm going to apply a potential difference across this okay say some v you can be a battery it can be our electric outlet anything it can be okay some potential difference v is applied now we know that when our potential difference is applied that means charge is going to start moving from one end to the other end okay so let us assume that there is total charge of Q. Okay, Q is the total charge. And that total charge is being moved from the end A to the end B. Okay, from one end to the other end. Okay, now while this is happening, we know what happens, right? The charges will gain some uh, kinetic energy. They start moving. Okay, and once they start moving, they'll crash into something like the ions and the met, uh, the atoms of the metal that are there. And once they crash, they slow down, they again pick up energy and start moving. This whole process is actually what creates the heat. Whenever we say that electricity appliance makes appliances hot, this heat comes only because of this constant loss and gain of kinetic energy. Okay. So over here, if we talk about the energy that is lost, it can also be talked about as the work that is done. Okay, because we know energy is conserved, right? If it's going somewhere, it's coming also from somewhere else. So I will say nothing but, uh, I'll say the work done is nothing but the charge multiplied by the force that is driving the charge which is nothing but the voltage, okay? Now, if this is the work done, then how do I find the power? Okay. We know one thing, since we said power is rate of doing work, I'll say power is nothing but work divided by time. Right? So uh, if that is the case, I'll say power equals to work is nothing but Q into V divided by T. Right? Now, if I have to Simplify this, I'll say P equals to Q by T into V. All right, so if I take Q by T, we know charge divided by time. That is basically, we are talking about current, okay? So I can say that the power is nothing but the product of the potential difference and the current that is flowing due to that potential difference, okay? That would give us the power. So this is one formula that we can use to measure power. Okay, we can get a few variants of this formula based on like how the sum is presented to us. Okay, so say this thing is something we know, we also know that V equals to IR, right? It's a very common formula that we've been using everywhere. 
So what I can do is in place of V, I can put this IR. Okay, so I can say P equals to IR into I. Okay, so I'll say P equals to I square into R because I into I is I square. So this is also one formula that can be used. Okay, so for example, if your question has V and I, then you can use this formula. But if it doesn't have V, it has I and R, you can use this formula. Or if it's asking you for any, basically having any two variables in this and asking for the third one. Okay, now. Now similarly, uh, what I can do, I substituted V here, I can also substitute I. So uh, what I can do, if V equals to IR, I equals to V divided by R, correct? I'll send that across. So I can say P equals to V by R whole square into R, okay? So I'll say P equals to v square by r square into r so this r and this square should get cancelled over here okay so i can say p equals to v square divided by r something like this okay so this is another formula that can be used when it comes to uh, power so with these handful of formulas in uh, mind, you can do any numerical that is given to you. Okay. Now, if we talk about the actual power of an uh, appliance, we'll see that um, whenever we talk about a electronic device, like say an iron or a toaster or whatever it is, They'll, they'll have something called a power rating on it. Okay. So something called a power rating on it. Okay. That power rating will have two parts. It will have something watts, something volts. Okay. Some number of watts and some number of volts. What is this watts is nothing but watt is the unit of power. Okay. This is also something you must have learned in ninth grade. Okay. Uh, since uh, work is joules per second, that is nothing but watt, okay? So power's unit is capital W, watt. Okay, which is also one watt is nothing but one joule of work done in one second. All right. So what is this power rating? Tell us specifically. Okay. Say that you have, uh, generally we have 120 volts of voltage. Okay. Say that you have a light bulb that says 60 watt rating for 120 volts. Okay. That means that whenever you have 120 volts of voltage, your bulb is going to, going to have the power of 60 watts. Okay. That means if I use any of these formulae, I can find out the unknown value. Okay, let's say for example, uh, since I have power and I have voltage, I can use either of these two formulae. Okay, I can find out how much current it's using or I can find out what is the resistance of that uh, uh, thing, that object. So let me use for this one. So I'll say P equals to V square by R. Uh, so 60 equals to 120 square divided by R. So R is nothing but 120 square is nothing but 120 into 120 divided by 60. Okay, so 60, two is 120. So resistance is nothing but two into 120, 240 ohms, okay. So basically this would be the resistance of the bulb that you're using. Now, uh, the reason why you are given power rating like this, that is basically watt along with volt is because your watts 
these are the these watts can change based on what is the voltage that is being used okay if you get 120 volts definitely the power will be 60 volt but what if your voltage is lower will your will your wattage also change will the power of that appliance change okay it definitely does because we know that voltage is directly proportional to current right only when there is more voltage can there be more current and only if there's more current obviously there's going to be more power also right so what we can say over here now let's assume let's try to uh, change this uh, voltage a bit okay say 12 volts uh, 120 volts is cut down into a smaller voltage like a battery okay so uh, when it comes to a battery we don't say voltage okay so if i talk about a battery i can say instead of i can write writing vi i can write p equals to epsilon into i if you remember epsilon is nothing but emf of a battery it is the analog of nothing but voltage something we have learned so instead of using 120 volts if i use 12 volts then what so what will be the power so i'll say my voltage is 12 volts i know my resistance for the bulb does not change right the resistance will be the same always so what is going to be the power used by that bulb so i'll say power equals to v square divided by r i can use the same formula again it's nothing but v square is 12 into 12 divided by 240 12 uh, 20 is a 240 to 6 is a 2 10 is a 0 0.6 okay so now if you see the amount of power has reduced okay i've reduced the voltage the power also reduced okay so this is just one thing to tell you that the power of the appliance will differ depending upon the voltage that is being applied across it okay now, uh, what is this general unit that we use? We can also use something called kilowatt because every appliance al always generally has higher, a lot of uh, power rather than just 60 watt. Okay, so one kilowatt is nothing but 1000 watts. Okay, which is nothing but 1000 joules per second. That's it's just that, okay. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, just a simple concept of power. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll just look at the next part. If you have any questions, doubts, please drop them in the comment below. And I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.